Hey, I'm Michael, and in this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how to DIY your very own doormat slash welcome mat with your Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. Now it is no surprise that I have done a few different tutorials over on my Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel on how to make your very own DIY doormat with a Cricut cutting machine. However, <laughs> y'all, this one is different. In my opinion, this is probably the best and the easiest one yet. So make sure that y'all stay tuned until the very end of today's episode because y'all do not want to miss out on a single Crafty or Cricut minute. Now, for starters, we will need a blank doormat like this one right here. This is actually a Coir doormat. Is I, I believe how you pronounce it, it's C-O-I-R doormat. So we will need one of these. I got this from Ikea, but you can get them from Target, Walmart, Amazon, you name it. You can pretty much find one of these doormats almost anywhere. We will also need a little surprise element and we'll be using some HTV for this. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. I have always used a permanent adhesive vinyl for doing these doormats. However, if you've ever tried it, you also know that using a permanent adhesive vinyl can be a little bit of a headache, can be a little bit of a struggle from time to time. So we'll be using this and trust me, even though it is a little bit more pricey than a permanent adhesive vinyl, in my opinion, it is just so, 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 so worth it. Trust me on that. We will also need a heat source. I'll be using a Cricut Easy Press 2. And we'll also need some little doodads that we'll get to once we get to them. But most importantly, we will need a design. And there is no better place, in my opinion, to get an SVG cut file for your Cricut cutting machine than crafty.net. All of the files are optimized to work flawlessly with your Cricut cutting machine silhouette, Brother Scanning Cut, StarCraft Solo, you name it, it works basically, it works pretty flawlessly with those machines. So let's go ahead and hop over to that site and I'll show you the design that we're using for today. All right, so here we are on the crafty.net homepage. Now, there is a lot on this site, so much goodness packed into this site. So what I'm gonna do is just come right over here to the search bar and we'll do a search for doormat. Now, what I'm wanting to do is come over here and actually filter the search results by what's trending. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is just a really quick and easy way to see what is most popular on a site currently. So let me just take a look through here real quick. Now I am really tempted to do this little doorbell broken, yell ding dong, really loud file. But I am also really tempted to do this one right here. It says, please hide packages from husband. I'm so obsessed with this file, y'all, because I can relate to it on a deep emotional level. So what I'm gonna do is actually utilize the one click download on crafty.net, just by clicking that right there. And then what we'll do is go ahead and hop over to Cricut Design Space, and I'll show you actually how to get this file prepped and ready for our doormat. And as you can see right here, we already have this design uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you're not entirely sure how to download files from crafty.net and how to get those into Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio or whatever design program that you're using, I will have a video linked for you all right up here, as well as down in that description box below. But as far as this goes, what we need to do is go ahead and resize this to fit perfectly onto our doormat. So what we need to do is go ahead and create a template. Now, let me just grab the measurements of this particular doormat real, real quick. All right, so this is right at 23 and a half inches wide and the height is right at 15 and a half inches tall. So what I'll do is go in here and click on shapes over here on the left-hand side of the page. And I wanna open up a square. Now, the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and resize this to be a digital representation of our doormat right here. That way we can go ahead and resize our file to know how big we can make it to fit onto this actual real life doormat. So to do that, I'm coming up here towards the top of the screen, right here where it says size. And the first thing I'm wanting to do is go ahead and click on this little padlock because this padlock locks in the proportions. So basically if we have this unlocked, we can have a different measurement for the width versus the height. So let me go ahead and unlock that. And then for the width, I'll put in here 23.5 for 23 and a half inches. Hit enter, and then for the height, we'll put in here 15.5 for 15 and a half inches. Now, the color of this, y'all already know, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but if it just makes you um, visualize the end result a little bit easier, then by all means, let's just go for it. So what I'll do is come up here towards the top left-hand side of this page, click on this color swatch, and let's just change this to a brown. 
Now let's go ahead and right click this and click on send it back. And obviously this is a little bit big for our screen. So I'll come down here towards the bottom left and just zoom out a little bit. There we go. Now I can go ahead and resize this to fit onto our doormat. Now I'll go ahead and grab this little resize handle and then just drag this outwards like so. And we do know that the maximum cutting size for our particular cutting mat is 11 and a half inches. Now I am using the 12 by 24 inch Cricut cutting mat, but even with the 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat, the maximum cutting size with Cricut is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches. So I know that that is like the max. That's like the biggest that we can go for this. So what I'll do is basically, I think we can basically take this to the max. So I'm wanting the height to be probably a little bit closer to that 11 and a half inches. All right, so something just like that should do the trick for us. And personally, I think it's perfect for the doormat. Now, some people might want this smaller, some people might want it bigger, but that's why this like, this template, like this digital representation works so well. It's because you can kind of get an overall idea of how this is gonna look on the end project. So we don't need this template anymore. Let's go ahead and come over here to the right-hand side of the page to this layers panel. Let me click on this little eye icon. Now, while we are over here in this layers panel, let me just point something out real quick that there is not a hundred little small layers that is comprising of this one SVG file. That is like my biggest pet peeve. It drives me absolutely crazy when you go and spend your hard earned money on an SVG file only to have to spend quite a bit of time going through and welding or attaching all those pieces together in the right order to make sure that you can actually cut it out in the right way. It's a nightmare. Nobody should have to deal with that. So that's why I co-founded Crafty.net. So all of the files on Crafty.net is top quality and they are optimized to be used with Cricut Design Space or really any other cutting machine software. So just wanted to point that out there real quick. But let's go ahead and come up here towards the top right and click on make it. All right, so as you can see here, it is basically just showing us that we do need this 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat, which we already knew. However, um, you can see up here at the top of this mat, it is a little bit closer to the edge. What I'll do is go ahead and just kind of move this down just a little bit like so, just to give it a little bit of breathing room around that, around that edge. Now we are using HTV, so we will need to go in here and mirror. So let me go in here and click on this little mirror tab right over here on the left-hand side of the page. And all we need to do now is come over here to the bottom right and click on continue. All right, so here we are on the base material cut settings page. So I'll go ahead and come down here and click on everyday iron on right over here. And that is my own preferred cut setting for the Starcraft Softflex HTV, which I am using today. It just works flawlessly for it. Like I absolutely love, love, love this stuff. And everything that I use or mention in today's video will be listed and linked for you all down in that description box below. And items like this that you can actually get from 143vinyl.com you actually get a 10% off everyday discount that is exclusive to crafty.net members. So if you are a member, you get an everyday 10% off discount on regularly priced items on the site. So let me go ahead and click on everyday iron on, and let me go ahead and apply this to our cutting mat. And like I said earlier, we are using a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat for this. Now with the HTV, we do wanna make sure that we're applying this with the shiny side facing down onto the cutting mat. So it should look like this right here, like a shinier side, that that goes face down onto the cutting mat. And then the side facing up towards you is more of like this dull matte finish. And then we can go ahead and load this into our machine and get started cutting. All right, so this is all done cutting. Let's go ahead and unload it and then flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the HTV. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and trim out the design from the rest of the HTV, just giving it a little bit of breathing room so that we can go ahead and uh, make sure that we have a little bit to actually grip down onto that doormat. So I do see that the design actually ends right over here. So I'm gonna go, I don't know, like an inch or two over to the left of that and then trim that out. All right, so what we're gonna do is go in here and basically make our stencil. We're gonna be weeding everything out, but we're gonna basically weed it out in reverse. What we would normally leave behind, we're, we're now removing. So basically we'll go in here and remove the letters and the design, basically leaving behind a stencil for our doormat. Now, if that seems a little bit confusing, don't worry, because I'm sure it's gonna make a whole lot more sense here in just a little bit.
All right, so as you can see here, we now have a perfect little stencil that says, please hide packages from husband. So on to the next step, which is to actually grab the doormat and go ahead and position down our, our stencil. All right, so I have that all positioned exactly where I want it to go. So what we need to do now is go ahead and preheat our easy press over here. Now, I am using StarCraft SoftFlex, so that is a temperature of 285 degrees, and the normal pressing time is normally eight to 10 seconds. However, we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit more depth here shortly. I also have my little Teflon sheet here that I will go ahead and just kind of lay out over our, our design. Now, as far as the time goes that we're gonna be pressing this down, if you've ever done permanent adhesive vinyl on these mats, which I have done up until now, then you may know that nothing sticks very well to this certain type of doormat. It can be a little bit of a struggle bus moment for anyone, no matter who you are. So as far as the time it's gonna to take to actually get this to stick down to the doormat, will probably be, it'll probably be a lot more than the normal eight to 10 seconds of, of heat that would normally be needed to apply this to something like a t-shirt. So we'll just go in here and basically apply the heat until we can go ahead and remove the clear carrier sheet away from the HTB. All right, so this is now preheated to the 285. So let's go ahead and start pressing this down. First, I'm gonna do is around 15 seconds or so. We'll go ahead and test it to see if it's sticking at all today. Um, if not, we'll go in here and just keep applying more, more heat. And I am just gonna keep moving this over each area just to make sure that we're applying the heat as evenly as possible so that some areas don't shrink up a little bit more than other areas do. So we're gonna go ahead and try this and see if we can get this to stay down. All right, so it's going well so far. It is actually sticking down. However, I want this to actually have a little bit more of a grip and hold onto the doormat if we're able to actually get that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over this for, I don't know, another 10, 15 seconds or so. I'm also just gonna try to apply a little bit more pressure as well. All right, so let's try this again. Yeah, and I can already tell this actually has a much better grip onto that doormat. And there may be some little bits and pieces, some areas that wants to kind of peel up. If that's the case, let's just go in there and hit that with a little bit more heat. I really think that with doormats, with um, using vinyl or HTV on doormats, I really think that patience is a virtue. However, I will also say that I do feel like this HTV method is so much easier than the permanent vinyl method. All right, so this little area right over here is wanting to peel up. Let's just hit that with a little bit more heat. Now just to make this a little bit easier, I am gonna go ahead and just trim off some of this HTV that I have already peeled up. And then I'm going to go over to this area and kind of reheat it up a little bit more. Now I will say this from my test run that I did with this project and the actual project I'm doing here today, I will say that it does seem like the hotter the HTV, the better it wants to stick down to this, this doormat and away from that carrier sheet. All right, so a couple little pieces wanted to kind of pull up while we were doing that. I am gonna go back over this just with the Teflon sheet, AKA my cover sheet, and we'll just go over here and just kind of press some of these areas back down. All right, so I am now gonna go over this with some painter's tape. Now, I will say this, that we're not only going to just go ahead and go around the borders of this HTV, just to make sure that it is nice and secured down to the, to the actual doormat, but we're also gonna cover up any part of the doormat that's showing that we don't want to be showing, that we don't want any of our spray on, which I did forget to mention earlier, we will be using the Flex Seal Spray right here. This stuff, in my opinion, has just proven to be the absolute best. My very, very first doormat that I made was from my mom, gosh, probably close to two years ago now, and hers is still holding up strong with the Flex Seal. The doormat itself, where there is not Flex Seal, is, is pretty rugged and ragged, but um, the areas with the Flex Seal has held up really, really good, surprisingly. I mean, obviously it's been 
It's been worn down a little bit, but it's still definitely visible and it's held up really, really nicely. All right, so we are now gonna go ahead and carry this outside. Just try to make sure that you keep the mat as level and as flat as possible, because once it starts bending, then it very well could have some of this tape pop up and some of the HTV pop up and move as well. So just be, be very careful with that. All right, so whenever I'm spraying Flex Seal onto the doormat, I like to do so in short little bursts. I also like to make sure that the can, and especially the nozzle, is directly over top and parallel to the stencil itself. I want to, at all costs, avoid spraying at an angle because I want to make sure that my lines are as crisp and clean as possible, and I don't want to risk any of that Flex Seal getting up and underneath of that stencil. Now you will need to go ahead and reshake that can of Flex Seal from time to time as you're spraying the doormat. After about an hour or so, I go ahead and bring that doormat back inside and we can go ahead and peel off the painter's tape and the HTV itself. Just keep in mind that the HTV does have a tighter bond to the doormat since we are using HTV. Because of that, it is gonna go ahead and pull up some of the fibers from the doormat whenever we're trying to remove it, and that is completely A-OK -okay and completely normal. What we'll need to do is just go back over top of this doormat with a lint roller once we're finished. Now, if you all liked today's episode, or if you learned something new, please consider taking two quick seconds to stamp that like button and dropping a comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things help us out tremendously here on YouTube. And it just honestly, really, truly makes my day. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for that. Also, if you are new around here to this brand spanking new crafty.net YouTube channel, consider stamping that subscribe button and also ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because there are gonna be plenty of new tutorials over here on this channel that you won't find over on my Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.